Hello dear students, today we are going to talk about lecture number 19, shock and crash syndrome. A lecture Shevchenko Alexander, Baltic Federal University, Medical Institute, Kaliningrad 2020. It is the last uh, lecture in your course, so let's go. First of all, uh, before shock we must uh, to talk about all syndromes of acute vascular insufficiency. Acute vascular insufficiency it's a syndrome characterized by a, uh, actually it's a group of syndrome characterized by a sudden drop in blood pressure, sharp weakness, in some cases a violation of consciousness and so-called peripheral symptoms. Acute vascular insufficiency syndrome is divided into three different uh, syndromes. It's syncope, collapse and shock. Syncope or faint. Uh, you hear about it a lot. So, syncope. It's an attack of short-term loss of consciousness caused by a temporary violation of the cerebral blood flow, not of epileptic nature. Uh, on this picture, in the middle of the 60th century, uh, one Italian uh, painter saw to us uh, the action loss of consciousness and this is a small video how people lose the consciousness during the physical exercise another video a loss of consciousness. Look precisely on the face of this man. What do you think they do on this video? And another one. Uh, that the syncope of fainting it uh, have not a nature of epileptic seizure or uh, organic uh, component in the brain uh, such as a tumor because we have such uh, definition as our what does it mean aura? We must uh, look another one time this video. Look on the face of this man. He turned his face to the side, his eyes go to the one side and he felt unconsciousness. And if you look at the hand of this uh, person, he has uh, spastic convulsions here. And personnel of the shop try to um, place some stick into his between his tooth because 
uh, it's very often uh, people uh, can chew or uh, draw its own tongue during the seizure. This is epileptic seizure. Or maybe some another organic reason in the brain of, he, of this person. So we have the different types of syncope. First, fainting is not associated with the disease of uh, circulatory disease. It was a vagal reflex, symptomatic faint, and orthostatic. Symptomatic faint, uh, fainting means that um, people have uh, maybe some loss of blood, in internal bleeding, and uh, he didn't know about it, and he was of consciousness, and the uh, loss of consciousness was only the symptom of the internal bleeding. Orthostatic, uh, orthostatic uh, fainting, it means that people um, immediately go from the uh, lying position to the upward position, that's, uh, and uh, blood didn't go to the brain so fast as it need and people loss of consciousness and fainting associated with diseases of the heart cardiogenic uh, cardiogenic syncope and arrhythmic uh, fainting cardiogenic fainting means that heart haven't so much uh, heart rate or heart output and arrhythmic um, fainting means that uh, heart have immediately loss of the, its rhythm and that is why we didn't have so enough cardiac output to give our brain um, such, s such many blood as brain needs at that moment. So clinical features of syncope. Loss of consciousness can be preceded by a state of nausea, nausea, blurred vision or flashing, flies in front of the eyes, ringing in the ears, there, are, there is weakness, sometimes yawing, sometimes legs give way and there is a sense of approaching loss of consciousness, patients turn pale and sweat, people with fair skin may have a slight blush on their face, after this the patient uh, loses consciousness. The skin is ashen grey, the pressure drops sharply and the heart tones are difficult to listen to. The pulse may be extremely rare or on the contrary frequent but the thread like barely palpable. Muscles are sharply relaxed, neurological reflexes are not detected or sharply reduced, the pupils are dilated and there is a decrease in their reaction to light. The duration of fainting is from a few seconds to several minutes. So diagnostics. What they are in our If uh, you see that people didn't uh, understand, he felt uh, unconsciousness, he say that he have blurred vision and uh, if anybody see that people uh, tilt his head uh, or his eyes to the side and then he go around its own axis um, like the uh, like the person from the video in the shop uh, it was an aura and the most the common reason of the aura is uh, epileptic seizure another one uh, reason of uh, such aura it's uh, organic reason uh, maybe it's some tumor in the brain and this is one of the reasons we excluded from the diagnostics. Uh, it means it, this was epileptic seizures. Another one, convulsion, uh, higher um, pulse, heart rate, low, lower blood, blood pressure, maybe spontaneous urination, duration, it's short, uh, maybe Two to five minutes and relapse. Pre-hospital care. Pre-hospital management of syncope covers a wide spectrum of acute care and includes rapid assessment of airway, breathing, circulation and neurologic st status. You must go 
A, B, C, D, E. Treatment may require the following intravenous access, oxygen administration, advanced airway techniques, may be placement in inhalation tube or gradual airway tube. You must administer glucose if you didn't have a glucometer because uh, at first you must think this is uh, fainting and this is all but it can be uh, hypoglycemic coma pharmacologic circulatory support pharmacologic of or mechanical restraints defibrillation or temporary pacing if uh, on the acg we didn't have um, normal heart rhythm you must uh, remember that we have rhythm we, which we can fibrillate uh, such as ventricular tachycardia uh, or electromechanical dissociation of the heart and we have rhythm we, which we cannot uh, really defibrillate uh, for example it's uh, asystole we didn't uh, we, we don't do the defibrillation in the case of asystole, you must remember it, because uh, we didn't um, have any result after defibrillation, but we lose time and uh, maybe this patient will be alive if we didn't do the defibrillation in the case. Collapse from Latin collapsus or fell, a life-threatening condition characterized by a drop in blood pressure and a de deterioration in blood supply to vital organs. Uh, it's one very important index, alcohol index or shock index. The shock index is equal to heart rate is divided by systolic blood, uh, blood pressure, whereas HR is heart rate and systolic blood pressure is systolic blood pressure. At the pre-hospital stage, Algova's shock index is useful for evaluating the volume of blood loss. Normal uh, shock index is nearly equal to 0 0.5. And as you see here, uh, if people lost less than 1 liter, it's equal to 0 0.8 or 1. Shock of the second degree, it's from 1 to uh, 1 to 2 and shock of the third uh, level it means it most more than 2 units treatment health transfusion of crystalloids and colloids uh, on the strict condition of blood components jetting uh, prednisone Intravenously, prednisone uh, is administered with insufficient effect. You must add 1 to 2 ml of 1% mesotone solution is added or uh, noradrenaline solution is added dog-wise. Vasopressors are used only after restoring blood volume. You can uh, add some caffeine or sulfacamphocaine solution. And what does it mean shock? We uh, very widely uh, know that people use the word shock, but what does it mean in, in the medical sphere? Shock is a pathological process that develops in response to the impact of extreme stimuli and is accompanied by a progressive violation of the vital functions of the nervous system, blood circulation, respiration, metabolism and the same other function. In fact, it is a favor of compensatory reactions of the body in response to damage. There are differences between the concepts of collapse and shock. Shock and contrast to the collapse is the reaction of the body to super strong, especially painful irritation accompanied by more severe disorders of vital functions of the nervous and endocrine system, blood circulation, respiration, metabolic processes, and often ex uh, excretory kidney function. But this distinction cannot be made in practice. Therefore, severe systemic manifestations will always be diagnosed as shock. And for you, too easy to remember, if you see that blood pressure is lesser than 19 mm of keterargyrum, 
uh, it means shock in all the cases. In case of the septic shock, uh, septic shock uh, we mean if was if the blood pressure is lesser than one mil, uh, 100 milliliters hydraulic room, you can say that it's septic shock if you uh, have uh, any other uh, signs of the of the septical condition. We have five main pathogenic variants of the shock: hypovolemic, distributive, cardiogenic, obstructive, and dissociative. All uh, these types go into this table. Cardiogenic: heart rate fails to pump blood out. Uh, it's uh, according to myocardial infarction, arrhythmia, aortic stenosis, or mitral regurgitation. Obstructive. Heart pumps well, but the outflow is obstructed. Extracardiac obstructive causes such as pulmonary embolism, tension pneumothorax, tamponade, etc. Hypovolemic. Heart pumps well, but not enough blood volume to pump. Hemorrhage fluid loss, vomiting, diarrhea, and burns. And distributive. Heart pumps uh, well, but there is peripheral vasodilation, septic, anaphylactic, and neurogenic, neurogenic shocks, pancreatitis, burns, multi-trauma, reactivation of the inflammatory response. But if you look at this uh, schedule, you see that I have another one type of shock. It's called dissociative type of shock. It's not so easy to understand, but the main into the pathogenic of the, all the shocks, it's uh, not enough oxygen which going from the blood to the tissues. And what another condition we can have where we have not enough oxygen to the tissues. Uh, in case of uh, fire, when people are breathing, in our blood uh, occurs carboxyhemoglobin. And carboxyhemoglobin grabs uh, the oxygen too tightly. It like uh, oxygen very much, and it didn't give up the oxygen to our tissues. So it's the pathogenesis of the dissociative shock. Uh, clinical classification: shock of the first degree or compensated shock. The victim condition is compensated. Consciousness is preserved clear. The patient is in contact, slightly inhibited. Systolic blood pressure exceeds 90 mm hydrogram, pulse is rapid, 90 to 100 beats per minute. The forecast is favorable. Shock of second degree. The victim is inhibited, the skin is pale, the heart tones are muted, the pulse is frequent up to 140 beats per minute, weak feeling, the maximum blood pressure is reduced to 90 to 80 mm hydrogram, breathing is shallow, rapid, consciousness is preserved, the victim answers questions correctly, speaks slowly. In a low voice, the forecast is serious, anti shock measures are required to save lives. Third degree shock, decompensated. The patient is uh, dynamic, in, uh, inhibited, does not respond to pain, answers questions, is monosyllabous, very slowly, or does not at all, speaks in a deaf, barely audible whisper, consciousness is uh, uh, inhibited or lost, the skin is pale, covered with cold sweat, expressed uh, acrocyanosis. Heart tones are deep, the pulse is third like 140 or 180 beats per minute, determined only on large arteries, carotid, femoral artery, breathing is so frequent, systolic blood pressure is below 
70 mm hydraulic room. And the central venous pressure is zero or negative. Anuria, absence of urine is absorbed. The forecast is very serious. Fourth degree of shock manifests itself clinically as one of the terminal conditions. Heart tones are not listened to. The victim is unconscious. The gray skin becomes a marble pattern with uh, stagnant spots on the cadaveric type, a sign of reduced blood filling and stagnation of blood in small vessels. Lips are cyanotic, blood pressure below 50 mm hydrargyrum, often not determined at all. The pulse is barely perceptible in the central arteries, and urea, breathing is shell rare, barely noticeable. Pupils are dilated, there are no reflexes or reaction to pain irritation. The prognosis is almost always unfavorable. Treatment Oxygen therapy, compensating for a lack of circulating blood volume with caution in cardiogenic shock. Between, uh, we must understand that we have different shocks in our practice, so if we have deal with the cardiogenic shock, we didn't use so many fluids in this case. Because if we give too much fluid, uh, to this patient, we can meet the lung edema. Therapy with drugs in order to cause a positive inotropic effect. We use volume substitutes. We uh, use narcotic analgesic, uh, non-narcotic analgesic, glucocorticoids, vasopressors. And here, um, I want to show you a small video about shock. <laughs> 